Welcome to the Lahaina Civic Center, full house tonight with the championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Maui Classic, the Hawkeyes of Iowa against the Wildcats of Villanova. Hi everybody, along with Bill Raftery, I'm Roger Twibel. We welcome you to Maui. We've got a great championship game for you tonight, Villanova and Iowa. Of course, the Hawkeyes of Iowa, one of the powers in the Big Ten, leading the nation in rebounding a year ago by a whopping margin of 11 boards a game. They've got six seniors, but they key off a junior, a guy by the name of Marble. Well, when you play for Iowa, you better tie your sneakers because you're going to get in the game. Marble is a sensational player around the basket, but he also has a good jump shot. Villanova's going to have to shade to him, Roger. The Wildcats of Raleigh Massimino, a bit of an off year last season, but this year, things seem to be clicking. Of course, they're in the championship game here, and Doug West has been a force. Well, he's an NBA type of player. He can dribble to the goal. He can make the jumper, but he also has a leadership quality that I think they lacked last year. So Roley's looking for Doug to carry his club. And then we have the coaching matchup. That's Roley Massimino, the veteran in his 17th year at Villanova, and Dr. Tom Davis in his second year at Iowa. But they have met before. Tom Davis used to be the head coach at Boston College, and Raleigh used to get the best of it. Well, two and six, but Raleigh says he made a move west to Stanford. But don't forget, Tom was getting that program going, and Raleigh was pretty well established at Villanova during those days. These are a couple of teams that could very well be in the NCAA tourney and maybe be toward the end of the NCAA tourney at the end of the year. Let's go back to our studios in Bob Lee. Tough duty for Raj and Bill. Thank you very much. Iowa and Villanova coming up. It's going to be a chance for us during this game, during the finals of the Maui Classic from Lahaina Maui, to wrap up what has been a very busy day and weekend in college basketball. Literally, they've been playing in all over the world. It's been a rough time for Kansas out in Maui. A tight time for Michigan. We will have scores of everything happening around the top 20 and through many of the tournaments. And also coming along at halftime, a complete review of this weekend in the National Football League. Highlights of all the games and see where we stand is trying to wean out some of those playoff teams and see where we stand. What we have up next is Iowa and Villanova. And welcome back to the Lahaina Civic Center. We are set for our championship game, Iowa against Villanova. Let's go to our public address announcer, Gene Davis, for the starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for tonight's championship game of the 1987 Maui Classic. First, for the designated visitors, the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Starting in the backcourt, at guard, number 10, B.J. Armstrong. Also at guard, number 14, Bill Jones. Starting at forward, number 40, Kent Hill. Also in the front court, number 23, Roy Marble. <laughs> Rounding out the starting five for the University of Iowa, number 44, Al Lorenzen. Head coach, Tom Davis, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Now introducing the designated home team, the Villanova University Wildcats. At guard, number three, Kenny Wilson. Also in the backcourt, number 42, Doug West. Introducing the starting center, number 33, Tom Grice. At forward, number 31, Mark Polanski. And rounding out the starting five, number 35, Rodney Taylor. Rodney Massimino, the Villanova University Wildcats. 
Raleigh Massimino, the head coach at Villanova. Dr. Tom Davis, the head coach at Iowa. These two have met eight times before. Massimino has the edge. He's won six of them. We'll be back with the start right after this. And we welcome you back to beautiful Maui. And what a place to have to come to work. Tough assignment. And we've had a whole day to prepare for this. Oh. Rafter and I had a Saturday off in Maui. <laughs> Bill, what about your keys? Well, the game well, one of these days I'm going to be right. The reason Tom Grice is there is he's, he's going to get the inbound pass. He's got to catch it and make the next pass. So it's a lot of pressure on him. Iowa comes at you full tilt. Don't pull the trigger. Of course, when you <laughs> played, that was a no-no. They've got to beat the timeline, make good judgments, and don't take bad shots and get into a racehorse game with Iowa where they're in deep trouble. And that guy, Kenny Wilson, will have to make most of those decisions. And, of course, the big guy. You'll see him pushing and banging inside. I think they can get the big people from Villanova in trouble if Ken Hill, Ned Horton, and company can play strong down on the box. And the starting lineups, Armstrong, Jones, Hill, Marble, Lorenzen, Wilson, West, Grice, Plansky, and Taylor. A year ago, Villanova 15-16, and 16, a sixth place, 6-10 six and 10 finish in the Big East. Meanwhile, Iowa was 30-5, and 14-4 and four in the Big Ten, a third-place finish, and, of course, they went to the NCAA tournament, and they spent it a long while there before they finally had to make an exit. Up in Seattle, they had their problems. But what a first year for Tom Davis. And they lost Low House, Wright, and those two were big men for them a year ago. But so far, they have been very strong in this Maui Classic. Iowa coming in with victories over Stanford and an impressive victory against Kansas. And, Roger, don't forget they lost Gamble as well. Of course, mm -hmm. he and Low House. Playing in the NBA. On the baseline, the jumper, and West immediately gets his first two. Villanova will be in the matchup, and they're going to favor Marble. Wherever he is, they're going to try and stay at home near him. Jeff Moe will be the first man off the bench for Dr. Tom Davis in Iowa. He started the first game, didn't feel real comfortable, came off the bench against Kansas and did a whale of a job for him. He's hit 6 of 13 from outside. Of course, Dick Vitale says he's the best sixth man in the country. Hill has got that Barkley body, the prototype NBA body at 6'6 six, six and 230. The miss by Gamble, Lorenzen underneath. The miss, but Hill keeps it alive. And it's going to be Iowa basketball and Bill, excuse me, it's going to be Villanova basketball. You see Iowa fighting so hard on the boards, and that's got to be a concern to Rolly Massimino. Well, you saw Grice move slowly. He's got to go after the basketball strong. That's one of his shortcomings. For a seven-foot-two guy. Yeah, I mean, he, they don't he, have many shortcomings. He won the game for them the other night, but here he is wide open. They couldn't get it to him. Tipped, but Villanova gets it back. A great athletic play by Roy Marble there. Roly and Tom, as you mentioned on the open, very familiar with one another. Plansky, and that's what he can do so well for Villanova. A great outside shooter. He's averaging 11 and a half points in the two previous Maui Classic games. And we've seen a lot of traveling calls in this tournament. <laughs> well, that was one, but some of them are suspect. There's Dr. Tom Davis, his second year at Iowa. And, of course, he came in from Stanford and immediately won 30 games his first year out, AP Coach of the Year. He's king in Iowa. Of course, unfortunately, his wife had to go home. Her dad passed away, and we offer her our condolences. Got to know Sherry when they were in the Big East. Of course, Dr. Tom is one of those coaches. I guess Bear Bryant said that he can take years and beat Usins, and he can take Usins and beat yours. <laughs> Uh, he, he plays so many people. He, he's a very positive guy. And, of course, the bench is always ready. Taylor misses on top. Plansky rips it off, puts it up and in. Plansky with two hoops. And it's 6-0 Villanova. Gamble misses, tipped around. And there's a man that can be a very important factor for Villanova 35, Rodney Taylor. Well, if Iowa keeps getting the ball inside, They'll be fine. It's the type of team going on inside where Grace fouls a lot. And Taylor, as we saw, has fouled a lot in this tournament. Taylor is one of those players with Grice that dropped 20 pounds during the offseason as West misses. And the rebound by Harris. 
by Jones, excuse me. 6'7 guard out of Detroit. Three point land for Lorenzen. He misses. Look at Hill on the glass. Blocked by Grice, but they call the foul. Well, they've got to keep going at him. Ken Hill, big, tough guy. He'll come out of the pack with some defensive rebounds and try to dribble the length of the floor. That's when he gets in a problem. But well, you see right here, that ball was over Tom Grice's head. Not good reaction. Hands weren't up. And, of course, underneath with the call. Hill, 6'6", 225. That's 20 pounds less than a year ago. He's dropped some weight. He's a fifth-year senior out of Wichita, Kansas, and Rolly Massimino. Now, he can talk to the officials, but the officials can't talk to him. Is that? Well, uh, that's, that's the rule, but uh, Rolly's got an audience there. A couple of people have joined him. He's dressing very well since he got to Maui. He certainly is. Hill puts it up and in. First two games of this Maui Classic, Hill averaging 10 points and 7 rebounds. The first point for Iowa. Well, they've got a score to set up their press, and we'll get into that as the game progresses. Jones, the 6-7 guard, and we've got our second traveling call. Now the big people are holding their ground. We were talking to Bruce Pearl, Tom Davis' top assistant. He says, really, he says, yeah, they've got six seniors, but they're a group of overachievers for the most part. They've overachieved so far very well in this Maui Classic. They overachieved last year, too, didn't they? Yeah, 30-5. and five. <laughs> You saw that inbounds to Grice. Plansky. He misses Hill and West, and they're going to call the foul on Doug West. Awful close calls early. That was a good aggressive rebound, a play-on type of non-call. <laughs> Referees getting used to one another as well, don't you think? Absolutely. B.J. Armstrong. I always like those guys with initials <laughs> instead of names, don't you? I used to lose the schools with initials. Jones misses. Well, look at him. 6'7 guard keeps it alive. Wilson's on his back. The foul's going to be on Kenny Wilson. Well, last, first. last year, Roger, I was out in Arizona, your home state. Yep. And Jones was hurting an Achilles tendon problem, so he didn't get a lot of minutes all year. And in this tournament, he has shown us his ability to play. Jones last year didn't get a lot of time. Lorenzen backed up low house. Hill, very little time backing up right. Marble, of course, was her main guy in the third traveling call. I thought Hill was pushed into the walk. Iowa's got four turnovers already. They've only scored one point. It is 6-1 Villanova. And the first substitution of the game for the University of Iowa, that's Michael Reeves. A 6'3 senior out of Milledgeville, Georgia. Reeves got into it. I'll tell you how tough he is with the uh, the big kid from Marvin the University Branch. of Kansas, Marvin Branch, who's 6'10. They got into a fight the other day. He might not be intelligent, huh? Pulled around with him. You saw the pressure handled in the middle of the floor. That's the ideal spot. Taylor, a strong move, the miss. Bryce got up, loses it to Lorenzo. I think both clubs are getting good shots, the type they'd like. Marble, the leading scorer of the last two years for Iowa. He can't get it to go, but folks, you're looking at one of the premier players in the country, Roy Marble, number 23, the University of Iowa's 6'5 junior from Flint, Michigan. Well, he can do it with the bounces we noted earlier, but here between defend, able to bring the ball to the side and almost have it go down. He's He plays within the system too, Roger. He doesn't do a lot of fancy stuff or things on his own. It's all according to plan. And I'll tell you, Flint, Michigan has turned out some great basketball players the last few years. A kid at Iowa State named Jeff Grayer. Mm -hmm. There's Marble. 63% from the field. 82% from the line. A couple of substitutions have checked in. Gary Massey, 22, the sixth man for Villanova, has come into the game. And Barry Beckadam has also come in at the post position. Now the pressure here, Villanova puts four across the foul line. It had been Grice getting free. They've been getting it into a good spot on the floor. That time they did. Ed Horton has checked into the game for Iowa, number 25. He's a 6'8 junior out of Springfield, Illinois. Oh, in the oh. lane and in is Good West. That showed you something. With the bounce. But if you get the ball inbounds on the press in the corner, you've got two more players, the sideline and baseline. Horton is in there. He's had some ankle problems. He's a load underneath. Oh. Beckham's going to have a tough time with him. West tips it away. 
And they say that Horton was out of bounds, and it will be Villanova basketball with 15-28. Left to go in the first half. The Wildcats of Villanova lead the Hawkeyes of Iowa 8-3. We'll be back to the championship game of the Maui Classic right after this. Bill, the SI College basketball issue showed Iowa's full court zone pressure, 1-1-2-1. One, one, one. They didn't show you how to beat it, though. No, but how do you well, beat it? Right there, Doug West got caught under the backboard, but if you get the ball into the corner, you're at a disadvantage there. This is almost a turnover, and that keeps Tom Davis happy. He knows it's going to work if they keep getting the ball in there. As back live, Wilson beats the pressure, comes down and nails one. Kenny Wilson's first field goal, Iowa does not have... They have but one, 10-3 Villanova, and traveling again, that's four. I didn't agree with that one at all. That's a drop step move, Ed Horton shaking his head. Here's the pressure, they gnaw away at you, Roger. By the end of the game, they feel they've got you playing their style. Plansky, he can handle the ball, he's 6'7", 200 pounder from Wakefield, Massachusetts. There's your man Mo in there. One of my favorite players. I enjoy watching him. Number 20 has just checked in. He's a senior from Indianapolis. He's a three-point threat. The Danny Ainge of college basketball. There you go. Into enemy arenas, they dislike him. At home, they love him. Zone now. First time. They've been shown man, Iowa. Wilson three-point land. And the foul, and a really unnecessary right. foul by Reeves. Silly one. His first. You like to challenge the shooter, but don't go into his lane. And some more substitutions. Villanova sends Taylor and Grice back in. Oh, when you're playing Villanova, you've got to have a temperament about yourself. They're not going to let you go up and down. Well, Tom Davis will play 10, 11, 12 guys, and Raleigh knows that. So he's trying to sort of reciprocate in kind. Good pressure on the inbounds right there. And Iowa's been known to they step do. across the line a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they get a violation here and there. But they make it tough to get it in. You've got to set your man up, and you got to move. Tipped away. Lansky's on the floor, and they finally blow the whistle for traveling. Tell you, a couple of the officials are listening to the benches. It's going to be one of those games who's ever closest to the official. Ooh, turnovers, Iowa 6, Villanova 2. And right now, Al Lorenzen will check back into the game for the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Iowa will push the ball up the floor. And when they get in their half-court set, they're patient. Tonight, so far, they've been going quickly after the basket in their half-court set. And Rowley. Nice tan. You know he's not been sitting indoor in the hotel lobby. All, all the assistants are without tan. Horton gets it back. Mo is in the other corner, but they go inside to Horton. That was a walk. And Tom, Tom Davis, Davis beside it. I told you, they've been calling more traveling. Mike Montgomery, the Stanford coach in the previous game, he finally said, for three years we've been doing this. Now you're going to change the rule here in Maui? Uh, it's tough to adjust. I think Tom's matter at the call before that was made by Horton. That time, I really believe he walked. I'll tell you what, between Davis and Massimino, they'll be working the officials all night long. They'll be up. They won't be sitting down. So much for the rule. So much for the rule. <laughs> That's Mo 20. Little three-quarter court pressure now. Plansky and Wilson. Taylor gets it, takes it inside. I'll tell you. And they're going to call offensive foul charge. on Rodney Taylor. His second. You can see, if you just fall on the floor anymore in college basketball, you're going to get the call. He was set up early. But with what can a player do there, Bill? What can they do to avoid Well, Taylor's that? dead once he goes up in the air and is leaning forward. You know, his strength and everything else. Offensively, though, when you go in like that, you just got to pull straight up. Well, I you, mean, you've got to be conscious of absolutely. it. Absolutely. you got to read the defense. But I'll tell you what, they ought to wipe out the goal if they're going to call it. You know, have some intestinal fortitude with the call. Don't appease both coaches. Basket did count. Horton inside. 
I thought he's he so walked strong. He walked again, though. He walked again. <laughs> Iowa applying that full court pressure. Eddie Horton's got the skates on tonight. 12-5. 13-25 left to go first half. Tom Grice doing a good job presenting himself to the basketball. Grice is the only Villanova player without a point so far. They haven't been able to get it into him. There he is. Got it. He's got a beautiful touch for a big man. And he doesn't bring it down at all. No, that's the great thing about it. There's Mo. 6 of 13 from three-point land in the tournament. He's kind of the Pete Rose of college basketball. Quick. Go to the floor. And there's Horton. They found him inside now for two successive hoops. Quick move by Ed Horton. Did not walk. The goal sets up the pressure. And, of course, they feed off it. If they get a turnover, it gets the adrenaline going for Iowa. With seven minutes and six seconds gone in the first half, Horton has the only two Iowa field goals. Look at the pressure here. Good job. Plansky throws it away. So they get back in it. No lead is insurmountable for Iowa to overtake. Hey, Iowa came from behind 16 down against Stanford in the second half to win it. Illinois last year, 22, I believe. Exactly. Pressure, defense, and rebounding creates easy offense. They roll it, they bounce that ball so well into the post. And Grice commits the foul inside. That's his second. I'll tell you, a couple of these guys want to put the whistles in their pocket. Take the P out. Let these big guys play I'm, a little bit. I'm glad you're making these statements because you were asking me the other night to reinforce them. Well, you it. vacillated so much, I have to be. Well, you know, play by play guys are politicians. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to, you know, we're on the fence. Jones with the easy hoop off the steal on the inbounds. Fourteen-nine. Wilson. Now that's good use of the dribble. His second hoop. Sixteen-nine. Here comes B.J. Armstrong. They put the pressure on you with the dribble, don't they, Iowa? You've got to get back in a sprint to defend against them. They make you play at their pace. They dictate tempo. Same set offense. They'll be very patient. They usually get good shots each time down. Horton so strong. Grice on the arm, and that's three on Tom Grice. Well, I think that's where Rowley's going to have problems all year. Tom Grice rides a man with his hip. He doesn't have the dexterity to move the feet quickly. Grice will leave, and Beckadam comes in. Here's Horton. He's in good position, but he really has to cheat. See the hands? He just can't drop that leg quick enough. But the big guy has improved immeasurably. So Grice checks out. He's averaging 15 points and five rebounds in the two previous games and got him the game winner to get him into this championship against Illinois. And the goal before to keep him ahead. So they know who to go to now inside. And that's the difference for Villanova. Besides Grice, you got Taylor, who's a very good post player. Horton misses them both, but he keeps it alive. And it's going to be Iowa basketball. And we've got a timeout, 11.40, left to go first half. Villanova and Iowa from the Maui Classic. This is how Iowa and Villanova got to the championship game. Kansas over Chaminade, Iowa beat Stanford, Illinois over Baylor, and Villanova beat Nebraska. Then Iowa derailed Kansas, a big victory for the Hawkeyes there, 18-point victory. And then Villanova over Illinois, Grice hit the shot to win it. And that's where we're at. Iowa and Villanova playing for the Maui Classic Championship. And one thing that Iowa has done very well is they've won a lot of these tournaments. They have won three previous tournaments that they entered last year. And they have to go home Tuesday night. They're flying out of here at midnight tonight. They play Drake on Tuesday, and then they host the Hawkeye. The road, yeah, they usually yeah. win that one, too. Yeah. Those are the type of tournaments that I used to be invited to, to be a <laughs> you know, good visitor. But uh, this Iowa team and the philosophy, it's interesting to watch Tom coach. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, everybody ties their shoes and is ready to play. It does a lot for the positive nature of a team, and they feel they can come back. The only thing I don't see with the Iowa team that you saw with this BC and Stanford team is the bounce pass. You don't see that as much. They do it once in a while, but it's not a mandatory now. They'll do it on the perimeter, too. 
They just feel big guys, particularly the post, won't bend over. Jones, I guess that was a pass. Lorenzen puts it up and in. Yeah, it was. Good luck. 16 to 11, Villanova with the lead, but it seems like Iowa's got this game under control. Wilson, pull up, pop, hits it. I'll tell you the one thing that Iowa has going, they know they can rattle Villanova on the inbounds pass. Six for Kenny Wilson. Kenny's high school team, St. Anthony's, is coming out here to play in Hawaii. No Bobby, kidding. yeah, Bobby Early. Hill Good. has it stripped loose by Plansky. Good save. Hill, Jones, Reeves, Marble, and Lorenzen for Iowa. Wilson, Massey, Beckadam, Plansky, and the officials over talking to Raleigh, Joe Shosid from the Atlantic 10, Jim Birch from the Southern Conference, and Ryan Suakoa. Don't from forget, Hawaii. excuse me, Roger, Villanova used to be in the Atlantic 10. There you go. <laughs> Marble and in. Roy Marble. His first field goal, he has four. It's 18 13. There is that full court pressure. Wilson splits it up the middle. Well, when he makes good judgments, as he did earlier, he certainly leads this club for Villanova. West, wide open on the side. He's got six. But I meant, I'm sorry, St. Anthony's is coming over here. It's high school, and they raised the money. Bob Hurley got some civic minded people together. Marble nice throws it away, and Wilson gets it. Boy, he's smart out there. He's got to be. He dribbled it in, saw there was nothing there, brought it back. West three-point line hits. West has nine, and it's 23-13, a 10-point Villanova lead. That's the spot. Lorenzen's outside. That's where Lohaus used to be tough. I asked Bruce Pearl if he can make that. He said not as well as Brad Lohaus. It was Bruce the assistant to Tom Davis. Iowa's got about 800 supporters here at this game. The Lahaina Civic Center seats 2,500. Massey strips it away. Massey gets it. And then he falls down. Very good defensive player, Gary Massey. Now, let's see if Jones will take it back. He does and hits it. Boy, isn't that something? You get me, I'll get you. Well, he was a little bit embarrassed. Wanted to prove a point. Jones with four. Massey's pushed out of bounds. And Raleigh's going, what do you mean? The guy was pushed. That's why they've got to have the force out rule. I mean, that was not strong enough to be a foul. That suit's going to be wrinkled by the time. There's a look at what West is facing. They're either having a big problem getting it in. Doug, of course, running the baseline, yeah. Hill gave him a shove. There was a shove, but that's where the force out would help the officials. 23-15. Mo is checked into the game for the Hawkeyes of Iowa. DJ Armstrong, three-pointer. His first points of the game, Armstrong averaging 10 and a half in the previous two. And it's 23-18, and that is a shot that Iowa will use with no hesitancy at all. Well, they've been getting it inside so well, now if they can make those shots, it's even going to be easier. Beckadam, he'll take it. He hits it. Nice prospect. More relaxed this year. 6'10 sophomore from Prescott, Canada. The shooter should extend the zone now. Horton. Great move in the lane by Ed Horton. And that thud you heard was Kent Hill. Whew. He is and a strong player. Speaking, speaking of strong <laughs> players, how about Rodney Taylor? Taylor checks in for Villanova. He's 6'6", 230 from Columbia, South Carolina. And he's another one of those smelt Villanova players as Bryce and him both went on a diet over the summer. Over the top to Wilson. In the lane, blocked by Horton. And here comes Mo. Three on one, the bounce pass. Good looking break. And Hill finishes it off. First two for Kent Hill, and it's 25-22. Jones steals it. Perfect rotation. You mentioned the SI article. That's exactly what they put on. Trap in the corner. The three-man comes up and takes the inbound passer. They had good rotation, Iowa. Over the top again. That's the way they've been beating it, Bill. That's the only way. It is. Every time they beat it, it's been over the top to Wilson. 
and they've had a break at the other end. Mo from three-point land turns it down. 27-22. Kenny Wilson has to play a lot of minutes. When he gets a little tired, his concentration is lacking. Horton hits it. Good tell you what, he faked Massey, and Massey tried to draw the charge. Didn't work. Good non-call. Well, they get their hands on passes, play the passing lane so well. Tough to beat them. Horton with eight. Wilson has six points and four assists for Villanova. The Wildcats lead the Hawkeyes 27-24. Well, Roger, you mentioned over the top, and Kenny Wilson, when he has the basketball in the middle, it puts a lot of pressure on him. He's got to decide whether there is a break, whether they can get anything out of the set. You see, they only have two people filling. Here he gets away with the charge and the block. He's got to spring that basketball back out, but this is the break that you enjoyed. At the end, they ended up with a nice Absolutely. bounce pass. Does Armstrong have to be more conscious, as we see him on the offensive end, and Hill will finish it off here. Does he have to be more conscious of the man behind him? Is that his responsibility? Well, no, that's the four. Unless they aren't matched up, he would go for Wilson. But the four man usually has to come up the floor and play that over the top pass. But there's that bounce pass that you like to see at the end of a break. Nice catchable pass. 27 24 Villanova over Iowa. I'm Roger Twibo along with Bill Raftery. We're at the Lahaina Civic Center in Kahana Poly. Maui, Hawaii for the 1987 Maui Classic Championship game. Look at the team fouls. Villanova 17. That should be seven. And Iowa won. Look at that pressure. Roger. Seven to one, not right. 17. Roger, just look how hard it is. Right now, Villanova has everybody down here, and it brings the defense down, too. So it's a problem that, in a sense, they're creating for themselves. Taylor, Massey, Plansky, that's West. Plansky is checked back in. Armstrong controls it, but he loses it. Oh, and I think Villanova might have made the call. They yeah, might they have swayed the official a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, a little diplomacy there. No question, you might as well try it. But they got a lot of lawyers to be on that team. Huh? The philosophy, Tom Davis, go down and take the jump shot. That's part of our press defense. You take that quick shot, we've got you playing our game. Look at this. Over the top. At that time, they couldn't get it to Wilson. And it's going to be Villanova basketball. Villanova's not cutting crisply to get free. Look at this. It'll be tough to get it in again. Good defensive pressure. Back into the zone. Marble out at the point. He's got to play the jump shooter outside and get down there as he did. Now that's a lot of work from the point all the way down. And that's why Tom Davis utilizes 10 players. These kids know they can go all out all the time, and there's no reason for him not to because he's going to run people in and out. Would you still want to go out, though, if you're a player? <laughs> I'd say leave me it even if I'm tired. Nice pop. Lorenzen got a piece of it. Great defensive play by Al Lorenzen. And here comes Mo. Last year led the Big Ten in three-pointers, misses that one, Marble the offensive board. Oh, oh, swatted away by Massey. Softly, should have blocked it softly. Jeff Bowe with the long jumper, of course the block now at the end of this whole sequence, but Massey a little, look at there's your bounce pass. And Marble. They did it against Kansas. Marble's got six, 27-26, one-point lead, loose ball, Mo gets it. Leaving their feet now too much, Villanova. Oh, they got a man, should have passed it. Oh, traveling called on Roy Marble. Marble had Lorenzen wide open, all he had to do was bounce it. This is the Iowa scoring leader the past two years, and he's closing in on 1,000 points. He's an exceptional player as Reeves comes into the game, replacing Armstrong, and Jones comes in for Moe. Well, they don't drop a notch of they intensity, don't. do they? They don't. And talent as well. That's the step through you need when you get stuck. Five fifty-five left to go, first half. 
West to the side. Lorenzen the rebound. Look at that pass. Great cut. Long move inside. 25, Ed Horton has 10. What a cut. He really presented himself to the ball. Doug West is really struggling because Iowa's doing a bang-up job denying the ball. And Iowa has their first lead. And they also have just one foul against them in the first half with 5.30 left to go. Not only have they been playing good defense, but good defense without fouling anybody. Of course, they're zoned, they're back in it, they're going to force the outside shot. Wilson, and he takes the outside shot and hits it. Wilson has eight. He's averaged ten and a half points in the first two games. Uh, and they call it on all you, have, all you have to do is fall on the floor, and there's a whistle. Actually, Lorenzen helped Iowa there. Nice foul, Tom saying, because they had a layup filling over. First foul on Al Lorenzen, just the second against Iowa. So that stopped the Villanova fast break basket. Not a bad one. Because there was a man open down the floor as Jones knocks it out of bounds. Now you can't deny the inbounds pass without a lot of work and practice. They do a bang up job denying it. And they call Hill on the foul over the top. Hill, the big fifth year senior out of Wichita, Kansas, recruited by George Ravling. I'll tell you, George left Tom with some nice players, didn't he? Hey, sure. George <laughs> usually... You never got one of those deals, did you? As well as I know George Ravling, he never sent me any good players either. <laughs> He's a heck of a recruiter. Listen, you talked about Iowa working hard in practice. Gary Close, Bruce Pearl, and Rudy Washington, the assistant coaches, do a lot of that practice Pearl, coaching. Pearl certainly gets into it, doesn't he? Bruce, Bruce, came, yeah, Bruce came up to me tonight, he goes... Roger, I remember when you used to do the Celtics games. I was a student at Boston College. I That'll age you. Yeah. Five minutes left to go. First half. And a good one. Villanova leads it by one. 29-28. Three-point land. Wilson. And Lorenzen's going to get a push-off. Oh, no. They call it on Taylor. I think you were right. Lorenzen extended the arm. Taylor gets... Is that the third? Third one. Ooh. Deep trouble now. Yeah, Grice has three and has played sparingly in the first half. Taylor now has three, and Beckadam will check in. So they'll, they'll work essentially now with a very small lineup with Beckadam at center, Massey and West at the forwards, Plansky, who can play any position according to Rowley. You know, Beckadam was up earlier before the foul, so Rowley was going to get him out, and that really hurts you as a coach. You make the right decision, and before you can get the kid out, that's number three. And Lorenzen misses the free throw, and the foul's going to be on Hill, and that will be his second. He gets what I call quality fouls. He goes after those offensive rebounds, takes anybody out in front of him. They throw it long to Massey. He gets it and puts it in. Great well, control. A little skill, a little luck there. Smart. Court awareness. 31-28. Three points. Villanova lead. Lorenzen. He hits it. He's homegrown. Al Lorenzen, high school All-American in the state of Iowa from Cedar Rapids Kennedy High School and it's 31-30. Not a bad player here. He was an MVP at DC in five-star yeah. camp. So. Very unselfish. Last year backed up Brad Lowhouse as Wilson hits another one from outside and Kenny Wilson now leads Villanova in scoring. He's got 10. Armstrong right back at you. Won't go. Mo knocks it out and it's going to be Villanova basketball with 4.02 left to go first half. Iowa really not respecting Kenny Wilson out there. I mean, he can make that jump shot. Well, he, he doesn't look for the shot, Bill. That's I mean, his, second. That's yeah, right. That's second for him. Steal by Iowa, and they step out of bounds. Boy, they are after it on every out of bounds. I mean, unbelievable pursuit. Jones grabbed it. Mark Jewell will check in for the Hawkeyes of Iowa. Timeout on the floor. Villanova leads it by three.
because Iowa's press is tenacious, Roger. You, here you're, you're locked in. This is the home run pass to Massey, but they match up so well. When you bring all your people down, it's difficult to get the ball in. But here Massey with good control. He knew he was under the backboard, got himself squared. But again, I can't get over, particularly tonight. Now, I've seen them press, but they are really going after it tonight. They're jumping in passing lanes. They're very confident that the five man, the deep man, will take any of those type of passes. We mentioned at the top that these two teams very likely, NCAA tournament teams, and very likely teams that could be a factor as the NCAA tournament progresses. And the way they look tonight, Bill, they look like they're in midseason form, both of them. Iowa, I think, because of so many returning veterans and the way they play, I mean, they're right from day one, October 15th, I bet they look this good. But Villanova is a different team this year. They're a step quicker, they're a little deeper, and a little more confident. Mark Jewell, a 6'9 sophomore from Lafayette, Indiana, has checked in for Iowa. Bad shot. Got away with it. The following in by Massey. He's got six, and it's 35-30. Villanova five-point lead with 3.20 left to go first half. You, you can't even see Beckadam when he gets behind Horton. I mean, that's how big Horton is. Or thin Beckadam is. Exactly. <laughs> Look at that. Posts up. Beckenham blocks it. Wilson comes up with it. And the foul's going to be on Mo. By Kenny Wilson out there the whole half just playing terrific basketball. First foul on Jeff Mo. Now get this. With 302, let's take a look at Beckenham, though, defensively. Uh, here's your guy, Beckenham. I just think he's more confident in his own ability and of course it gives Rowley that extra big guy because I think Bryce will have his foul problems. Wilson finds Plansky wide open. He misses the three-pointer and Jewell gets the rebound. Horton hit him and he walked. You have seen more walk calls than you will in a I, season. I, in this tournament I don't know if it's just these officials but I've seen I saw in the previous game when Stanford played Baylor at least 20 traveling. Well you will see Horton hit him now see he switches pivot feet before he puts the ball down. Close. Plansky. Off the glass. Won't go. West battling underneath with Horton. And it's going to be Villanova basketball on the change of possession. Mark Plansky's had two shots that he would make 9 out of 10 and miss both of them. Well, they're going to give it to Iowa. Yeah, change of possession. Okay. Well, that's what I was looking at. And then they... The lights okay. out on it. Lights <laughs> not working. Iowa's turned it over 13 times so far in the first half. You got everything here in Maui except the light, huh? Don't be complaining. Miss on the side. That's and a, Beckadam. He threw it onto the backboard. And Plansky fouls him from behind. He is so tall, he hit the back of the backboard, which is an out of bounds, really. It cost him a foul. Watch this. The Missed side by Armstrong. This would never happen to you or me. No. Watch him. As he goes up now, he oh. hits the back. Now, that's out of bounds. Once it hit the back of the backboard, and it cost Villanova a foul. You better tell the official then. Well, I've been doing a lot of it here. I think I'll leave him alone. Now, Marble will go to the free throw line for Iowa, and they have converted on just three of seven so far. Get this. Villanova has not been to the line with 218 to play in the half. That may not. <laughs> that's right? true. Three of eight. They went through a tough year last year, Villanova, when they would lose games like the game against Illinois, but Rowley feels good about this club winning them this year. Villanova lost 13 times the top 20 ranked basketball teams a year ago. So they do a great job. And they lost six games, the Villanova Wildcats, by two points or less and another traveling violation. I so, say the kids don't even know how to play no. now. They, they, they don't know how to react at all. Just put the whistle back in the locker at halftime. And let these guys go out they, one another. But they've come a long way, Bill, <laughs> to, to work. You know, I mean, I, I guess it's... We're not here to watch them. No, that's true. <laughs> Bo, three-point land. Won't go. Plansky with the checkout. 
And on Mark Plansky, his second foul. Now keep in mind, Bryce and Taylor both have three apiece. And this guy is so crucial for Rolly Massimino. He's taking up the shooting slack with the departure of senior of a year ago, Harold Jensen. His dad is a coach of his sister. And Mark said he's got the feeling after this year, his dad's going to give up coaching the girls' team and take over his younger brother. So uh, a little talent in that family. Mark Jewell, sophomore, 6 nine, from Lafayette, Indiana. We'll go to the line. And another whistle. I think Horton with a grab. Mark Plansky surprising. Strong. Gets himself into situations that a guy his size often doesn't get involved in. Very impressive on the glass. Lorenzen comes back in. Jewell goes out. Iowa 4 of 10 from the foul line, and they trail by 4, 35-31. Plansky pushes through people, balls loose. Lorenzen and Roy Marble is going to be called for a technical for hanging on the rim. I'll tell you, these, fan ba <laughs> these fans are not very happy with the officiating, but again, the trap, they're just so good at keeping after it. Marble finishing that baby off, and eh, maybe he did, but let it go. Tom Davis. The Saint asked the other guy if he got bumped. Asking Ryan Suakoa, the Hawaiian official, to talk to Jim Birch and Joe Shosid Plansky to shoot the technical. And that is the first free throw, if you will for Villanova with 136 left to go in the half. Now we can't see over Lorenzen's no. head, the right in half court here. I mean, you just can't see your target. That's part of the problem in bounding against Iowa. And the man right now, Beckadam over the top and in, but from way outside, the official says the foul on Barry Beckadam. Now, Bob Lee's back in the studio, and he was a student at Seton Hall when I was coaching. I would be without jacket, maybe trousers by now. <laughs> I mean, you have no idea. You would have certainly taken your tie off. Oh, uh, I would be escorted to the president's office after this game. Well, Lorenzen will shoot one and one. And he gets the first one. And if you can see this at home, after the made free throw, the man opposite the ball on the press plays the passing lane, so you have to loop it over his head, and it's too far a pass. You'll see here Marble now. See, he can play that passing lane and go up and step in front. It's a one-point Villanova lead. They can't get it to Wilson. B.J. Armstrong off the glass and in, and Iowa has the lead, 37-36. Their defense creates their offense. I'll say. And I'll tell you, Marble just caught an elbow in the head. No Should whistle, be. and Wilson hits it. Should and finally, be. Tom Davis is beside himself, and he has a right to. It should be a two-shot flagrant. And Tom Davis. And that's not like him. No, He's absolutely not. right. Tom Davis is a very well, cool, is he a calm, and collected individual, very soft-spoken. And he's sending Jones over now to talk to one of the officials. I don't know if we have it. Now, Weston Horton and Rudy Washington, one of the Iowa assistants, comes out and is getting his players back. But the Iowa team positions are out taking a look at Roy Marble. Uh, he has a cut over the left eye. I don't know if we have got that on tape. But Tom Davis is just seething. 
and obviously if a player has an injury like this you know something's transpired and you figure there are three guys with striped shirts that are out there and how can all of them miss it and sometimes it boggles well, here it is let's look it's definitely a flagrant foul see kenny flail the left wilson. arm yep. wilson nails him with the elbow and there is the hawaiian official out. ryan suakoa he's actually screened out in fairness to him but Wilson was the man that committed the flagrant foul. He's explaining it. He didn't see it. I'm saying everybody in the place saw it. Well, maybe he'd like to come over here and take a look at it. Well, there's the feistiness, and that's what shows on the Iowa team. Tom Davis's players really go after it. He's a and then they quiet, get penalized strong guy. Now Marble's taken out of the play. Wilson goes down. It's a five-on-four situation. They get the hoop, and it's Villanova 38, Iowa 37 with 56 seconds. Folks, these games don't count on the record. This these is, don't count. This is like this has never happened once they get into the season. Late November. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you, Kenny Wilson was attempting to go down to, to apologize, but... The Villanova people kept them away. Right here, you'll see now, as the trap is ready to occur, the well, left where, arm. Where is he screened out at? I can't believe this official, Bill. i got to disagree with you. Well, his body is on the other side. Is this official, this on, the official right. on the right. The arm he can't see, though, Roger. He's be, he's on the other side of him. He was on he was on the far side of the court, and, the, and Wilson threw a left elbow. From inside him, though. Freddie Pacheco, the fight doctor, Al, we'll get no, on this one. Al Bernstein. That's right, that's right, Al. Let's, let's keep it in the he's family a, He's here. a basketball man, too. Rolly knows. Well, what's he going to do? It's just a miss by the officials. And certainly, I hope Marble gets back. It, it just boggles my mind, though. You can have three officials out here on the floor. And, I mean, these guys are trying their best. They're doing their job. That officials can come out of nowhere to call a touch foul somewhere. Big-time call, right? A big-time call. And there was one of those calls in the Seton Hall, Florida game, by the way, at the end of the game. That's what I heard. And a guy throws a flagrant elbow. A guy's got to leave the floor, was going to have stitches, and nobody sees it. I'll tell you, Roger, I always felt when I went to three officials, why not get two more and then have one official for each pair? <laughs> <laughs> Control the game completely. Well, Tom Davis has calmed down, but I'll tell you what. He was going to bust an artery. Now you know why they win a lot of games. Now you know why Davis has white hair and why the guy sitting next to me has white hair. <laughs> well, I didn't win in a, in as many as this guy. You didn't not, get that from winning. Not near, no. I usually help everybody get into a tournament, but myself. 54 seconds left to go on the half. Villanova leads it by one, 38-37. Boy, and the Iowa fans have really come alive, too. That sort of incited them, not in a whistle. And now they get Beckadam with just a touch foul. Oh, my goodness. They make their own bed, don't it, they? It's the problem for the players is how to play. It's a real dilemma now. You're absolutely right. You know, you, you want to, this is a game for the players. It's not for the coaches. It's not for the officials. It's for the players and the fans. And you'd like to be able to say to your kids, hey, go out there and play hard, play well, enjoy yourself, and let's try to win and do all you can to win. But now these kids are looking around going, what do I do? You know, what do I do next? I can't do this. Very difficult situation. The players have to be composed, though. Both coaches calm now. Iowa misses another free throw. West looking to Wilson. He gets it to Massey and now Wilson. 35 seconds left to go in the half. They'll hold it for a final shot. Boy, they're on Kenny Wilson now. Boy, they really are. Ideally, they'll run it down to around five, six seconds, then make their move. Four seconds, Wilson, three-point land, and that'll end the first half. And what a first half from the Lahaina Civic Center, Kahanapali, Maui, Hawaii, the championship game of the Maui Classic. Villanova leads Iowa.
38 to 37. We'll get you an update on Roy Marble's condition. Let's send it back to Bob Lee. Thank you, Raj. Normally, Lahaina Maui is a quiet old whaling village with a lot of tourists, but it's a real hotbed of basketball tonight. A one-point game at halftime, 38-37. We'll get back to Lahaina and the Maui final and the final between Villanova and Iowa after we get you caught up on the National Football League and also what's been happening today in other games in Maui and Alaska and around the entire, well, Europe and also the Caribbean. Illinois with a win over Kansas for third place in that Maui Classic, 81-75. Ken Battle had 21, Glenn ba Blackwell had 13. Kansas goes to Maui, number seven in the country, comes home with two losses. Stanford wins the fifth place game. Victory over Baylor, 69-56. Todd Lichty had 27, Howard the Wright had 11 rebounds in that game. Seventh place going to Nebraska, the one-point win over Chaminade, 76-75, as Bo Reed had 20 points in that game. Meanwhile, in New York City, St. John struggled but won the Lapchick Tournament against Loyola of California by three points. Michael Porter with a steal and a basket with six seconds to go. The consolation game goes to Harvard. The Crimson now one and one. They beat Tennessee Tech by four points. Ralph James and Kyle Dotson each had 15 points in that game. Up we go to Alaska. We're in the Great Alaska Shootout, the third place game earlier tonight live on ESPN. Michigan by a deuce over UAB, 78-76. Gary Grant with a couple of late free throws, key ones in that game. The Division II Alaska Anchorage Seawolves with a win over Miami of Florida for the fifth place, 78-77, as Bobby Russ had a free throw with four seconds to go. Uh, Southwest Texas State wins the consolation game over Duquesne by four. The Dukes come home without a victory. J.T. Marshall had 17 points in that game. Meanwhile, Cork Island, Ireland used to be a great part of, uh, deep, uh, of uh, deportation, I should say, for the uh, states as uh, all the uh, folks came over from Ireland. Well, Canisius playing today in Cork Island against Ireland, winning that game 95-72. to And in overtime, Iona at that same spot, winning over St. Louis in the uh, Irish Classic 77-76. to The Hawaii Pacific Invitational playing this one in Oahu. And Alabama wins the championship 83-80. to Alvin Lee had a three-pointer at the buzzer for that victory. 83-80, the final score. New Mexico State defeating the Sea Warriors of Hawaii Pacific 95-81 to as Keith Hill had 17 points. Meanwhile, back in Springfield, Missouri. Southwest Missouri winning their own classic over SMU by the count of 69-58. to Glenn Putty at 16 points and 8 rebounds as SMU uh, uh, with that rally, San Francisco with a, a win over James Madison, 82-78. Keith Jackson and Rodney Tension each had 13 in that game. Kennard Winchester had 26 for James Madison. Other games around the country today at the Mid-South Coliseum, Memphis State over Washington, 86-57. Sylvester Gray had nine rebounds and 20 points, shot nine of 12 from the floor, and Memphis State is now 2-0 on the season. And Tulsa. As Nolan Richardson, the Arkansas head coach, came home to Tulsa for the first time since leaving in 1984. Tulsa with the easy victory. Tracy Moore had 15. Rod Parker had 14. And uh, Nolan Richardson with his first victory, uh, as we said, visit back home since now uh, being the head coach of the Hans. We've got a one-point game at the half. We have had a physical one so far. Villanova, much the underdog, has the one-point lead at this point. We will check the NFL highlights of this Sunday right after this word. On the island of Maui, they like to say Maui no ka'oi. Maui is the best. If you like physical basketball, and it has been that kind of a game. 38-37. Let's get back out of Roger Twible and Bill Raftery in Lahaina, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Bob. Villanova leads it by one, 38-37. They did it in the first half without Tom Grice, who got three early fouls. And then Taylor also picked up three. But what the folks are still buzzing about here at the Lahaina Civic Center, Bill Raftery, is the foul that wasn't called, the elbow from Kenny Wilson to the forehead of uh, Gamble, and we're going to take one more look at it. You felt the official was blocked out. Whatever happened on it, there was no call. Well, I, I thought the other official should have seen it because we saw it from our table location, but no question, a vicious swinging of the arms. You know, it should be two-shot technical foul, unsportsmanlike, and he's back, fortunately, and in good health, Roy Marble. He had just ignited this club with a dunk. I mean... It's a shame that had to happen, but I just felt all half things were getting away from the officials. And when that happens, players are unsure of themselves. They start taking some liberties. Marble with nine points in the first half. Horton 10 to lead the way. Meanwhile, Kenny Wilson was a force to be reckoned with offensively for Villanova. But there was a lot of pressure, a lot of good defense played by Iowa. And Villanova was able to counter. Well, unfortunately for Villanova, if they could get the ball in frequently and not get tied down in the corner where they're turning the basketball over as the case is here. Mark Lansing does a good thing. He tries to step through 
but he puts the ball, he can't get his body through, and of course that's a power dribble, which is a great move, but Al Lorenzen now hustles in, and Roy Marble, very smart, he had been out in the wing, fills baseline, sends it through, but that's been going on all half, and it's a great confidence booster for Tom Davis and his Iowa team to know that they can go get that basketball anytime they want. Iowa 6 of 13 from the foul line. Villanova went to the foul line just once, and that was on the technical. That's right. So Villanova did it all from the floor, and when they were able to beat the pressure, they usually did it over the top. Well, if you can go over the top, I think they have a lot of people down at the one end. That's probably one of the big areas of concern for Roley. Now they go deep. The five-man doesn't cover real well, but Gary Massey runs the ball down. Now he's under the basket, sets himself, turns. Very good court awareness. They need more of that, unfortunately. Well, I'm sure if you'd ask either Tom Davis or Rolly Massimino when they came into this tournament, they were looking for the answers to a lot of questions. Uh, they found some answers, and as far as Bill and I are concerned, they both look like they're in midseason form here. We've got a one-point game in the championship of the Maui Classic. We'll be right back. Roger Twybill, Bill Raftery back with you here at the Lahaina Civic Center in Kahanapali, Maui, Hawaii at halftime. And Villanova with a one-point lead over Iowa, 38-37 in a controversial first half, if you will. Field goal percentage, Iowa 56%, Villanova 57, 15 of 27, 18 of 32. Very close there. The difference could have been at the free throw line where Iowa hit just 6 of 13. Villanova's one free throw by Plansky, that on a technical foul shot. Rebounds, Iowa 12, 6 on the offensive, 6 on the defensive. Villanova, two offensive, six defensive rebounds, 12 and 8. The rebounding statistics shouldn't surprise you since Iowa led the nation a year ago. Turnovers, Iowa 11, and Bill Villanova with just eight. That's surprising considering the pressure that Iowa applied. <laughs> it looks worse, doesn't it? Chris Villanova, once it, they get over half court, shot of Roy. Unfortunately, he's feeling good. How many stitches? Eight stitches, and oh. they're going to try to play him in the second half. You know, we were talking about the, the elbow that Kenny Wilson threw. You had mentioned several times that maybe there was some acting on the part of the players. Maybe the fact that if you fall down, you get a foul call. Maybe this time the officials said, I'm not going to call it if the guy falls down. It's finally down. legit. Yeah. <laughs> and if they don't get it, they should take a pop at the Hawkeyes. Diversified scoring as they usually have. Horton leading the way with 10 and then Marble with 9. Two fouls on Hill. Meanwhile, for the Wildcats of Villanova, 12 for Wilson. West with 9, but three fouls for Grice and Taylor. Uh, they have just two points apiece, and we're underway. Second half of the championship game, Villanova and Iowa. It's Massey, West, Wilson, Plansky, and Taylor. So Grice not starting the second half. Wilson puts it up, misses. Taylor on the follow won't go, and Lorenzen the rebound. It's Lorenzen. Mo starts the second half, along with B.J. Armstrong. Mo three-point land, hits it. And the fist. He's ready. He thrusts that fist in the air. Oh, this is a bad foul by Massey. A real bad foul by Massey. His first. And look at Mo. He's an inspirational type of sure player. Is. I called him the Pete Rose of college <laughs> basketball. He kind of similar in looks to Charlie Hustle. Watch he, this now. He gives everything. A real smart play. Gets in position. You see the hand extended by Gary Massey. And, of course, you got to start early as if you're an official Jim and Birch. He, and he did one of those Sir Lawrence Olivier. Oh, they're so. calling it a technical now. They're saying that it was... Flagrant. Yep. So Mo, who hit the three-pointer, those his first points. We'll go to the line now. And all of a sudden, Iowa can have a three-point lead, which they do. <laughs> Mark Plansky just came over and asked us if it looked any better from the ringside. He's been watching top-ranked boxing too much. Uh, so a quick five points for Jeff Moe. The players are the calmest, I think. Oh, absolutely. But they got to settle down and play basketball. I'm anxious to see how Kenny Wilson handles the second half. Wilson, excuse me. Moe averaged 15 and a half points the first two games in this tournament for Iowa. And he was unheard of in the first half. But he is starting the second half with Marble City now. Good start by Iowa now. But he got away with a walk. And the foul is going to be on West, his second. So the penetration by B.J. Armstrong, the junior out of Detroit, Michigan, Brother Rice. And they've turned out some basketball players there through the years. Of course, the spread of the offense has Roley dismayed. They, they've spread much better coming out here, getting the dribble penetration that you mentioned, and it really extends Villanova's defense. And there's a look at Roy Marble. 
the ice. And once again, Iowa with the free throw line, and Armstrong connects. Right now, Villanova on the ropes. They've got to inbound it and get themselves a basket at the other end. Seven quick points for the Hawkeyes of Iowa, and they lead 44-38. They came out ready. When you play Iowa, it's tough to prepare because your second team doesn't go at you like their team does. They just keep after you. Wilson, beautiful move by Kenny Wilson. So much for the psychological downside for He's Kenny got Wilson. 14 points. That was his season average of a year ago. Very patient. They get their feet set for the jump shot, so they're in a threatening position. Great inside passing team, too. And Plansky's going to be called for the foul. His third. So now Taylor, Grice, and Plansky all with three. Of course, the cutting inside to the box drags the defense over, and Plansky had a disadvantage on this side when they reverse the basketball. Mark Plansky, one of the highlights of this trip to Maui, getting to meet Miss France. Ooh, I don't think his girlfriend will like that, though. Well. <laughs> you can't keep everybody happy, can you? No, that's right. <laughs> one out of two. Lorenzen, she told me she likes gray hair, fellas. It leaves me out. <laughs> I don't have any <laughs> hair. Over the 540. Tough spot for Doug West to get the basketball. Taylor. Boy, he uses that thick body so well. This is second hoop. They need some offense out of him. Look at Jones that from right at the back. other end. They're going to call this a charge? Yeah. Count the basket and call it a charge. Oh. Uh, Jones' first foul. Jones here. I thought he was sliding by the defender. And look at this. Plansky was there too late. Yeah. Now. I don't know. I very seldom get involved in refereeing. So well, tonight's been about for three days. I know. Tonight's been difficult. Well, you're off to you, you <laughs> got a, your preseason in fine form. You're already on the rest. Wilson can't get the roll. Hill and Armstrong up there and over the back. I think it's Massey. It is. Foul's on. Listen, folks, broadcasters have to go through their preseason. And then uh, the obviously out. this year, you're going to work the officials a little bit more than you did last year. No, it, it's just it sort of took away from a very competitive first half, I thought. The unknown is you see Grice coming in with three personal fouls. He's got to be careful. And Taylor with three sits down. Raleigh doesn't have a lot of depth on the bench. No. That's where Iowa can really hurt him, especially late in the game. These kids have traveled a long way. They've practiced. They've played every day here. Man to man now, excuse me, Raj. Mo underneath, uses the body and gets it. What a screen by Jones. Set that whole thing up. Seven points for Jeff Mo, the senior from Indianapolis. And then they call Mo for reaching in. Second foul on Mo. Scotty Skiles, one of his favorites. Oh. He plays a lot like him, doesn't he? Better believe it. Very competitive. Sort of in a nice extension. From the bench, Mo. You know, he really gets the gets the juices flowing. And he Iowa. relishes that role. Uh -huh. He feels he he. From what we understand, when he started that first game, he went to Davis. I just feel more comfortable. I feel it's more me coming off the bench. Mm -hmm. and boy, you got a player like that who. Oh, uh, he should have gotten right up, Grice. West what? is able to convert, but you Taylor and Grice both had a chance. But... Very lucky. You won't see him doing that at the end of this year. He'll take it and slam it. 49-44 Iowa. West with 11 points now. You know, I, I, I've seen Raleigh here, of course, at the uh, Lahaina Civic Center, but I've seen him in restaurants and golf courses, so we like to do the same thing, play golf and eat, I guess. <laughs> well, either he is good taste yeah. or both of us do, yeah. right? Because you mentioned the bench. And the problem is with Kenny Wilson, I think. He's got to play a lot of minutes and at this tempo, and, of course, the he pressure. He hasn't been out of the game no, yet. No, he's got to handle it every time. Great inside screening by this club. Grice blocks it from behind, and West gets it underneath. 
Well, and if Wilson comes out, then they have to, Plansky's really the guy then that they're going to look to to handle the ball. Right, well, if Pat Emright gets some minutes, if he can get some confidence, he could help them. So you're pro yeah, bad That's pass. a bad pass. Right. And it's a three-on-three three right now. Armstrong loses it. Looked like he stepped on Wilson's foot. Watch him lean into him. Will he challenge Hill? He does. Yeah. He's got a good ability to lean left, hold the defender off. All little guys need that move. Wilson's got 16. He leads all scores. And it's 49-46. Outside. Won't go. Plansky the rebound. I don't know about that shot, huh? The speed. Quick. Pull the trigger. Uh, Jones looking for something that just wasn't there. Good night call. Wilson. Misses. Grice over the top. No call. Lorenzen saves it. B.J. Armstrong down court to Jones. Look at Mo running. Pull up pop on the side. Got Mo, it. Mo made that play by running down the middle. Sucked the defense away from Jones. Six for Jones. 51-46. Iowa with 15-52 left to go. Play Bill Jones can play. Pretty kiss shot there. 6-7 guard. I'm very impressed. As you mentioned earlier, he didn't get many minutes last year, but starting out pretty good this year. He's another one of those seniors that Dr. Tom Davis has. Six in all, 51-46 is our score. We'll be back to Maui in a minute. Roger Twigel, Bill Raftery back with you at the Lahaina Civic Center, Kahanapali, Maui, Hawaii, our championship game of the Maui Classic, Iowa. Really came out strong, scored the first seven points of the second half, and they lead it 51-46 with 15-45. And Pat Enright now has checked into the game number 10 for the Villanova Wildcats, and Wilson will get his first rest of the evening. That jump shot, the legs weren't in it, and Roley recognized it, got him out. Well, they just go after their people on everything. Nothing free. Remember the old days, free out, give me room? Not with Iowa. So we'll watch what happens with Pat Enright. He is a fifth-year senior. Folks, he's already graduated from college. He's got his degrees working on a master's right now. Two majors, right? <laughs> he does typify the term scholar athlete. Three-point land. Yeah. And Raleigh kind of puts his hands up and goes, what are you doing? He didn't have to take that one. He's just in there to run the show, and he gets west of Powell as well. He just That's said the Roley, he just said the Roley, my fault. Third foul on Doug West. That, that, second. that disarmed yeah. him as a coach. Well, I think, you know, for a kid like Enright, he's probably nervous. Hey, go ahead, take the shot. It was open, and if he gets it, you know, then he feels better. He missed it, and Raleigh feels right. worse. Three-point land. Won't go for Reeves. And this is Enright. Enright. Bryce. West. Taylor. And Plansky. Bryce hasn't gotten the ball down there much. Boy, he's got that thing down pat. He's got the hooker or the jump. Bill, we see nothing but net when he makes it. I mean, it's clean. Tell you, he is off this year. Out of the gate strong. He's so, got four points tonight. 75%. I mentioned to him before the game, he doesn't get to the foul line much. He's got to toughen up his inside game. 51-48. Mo three-point land off the glass, and Taylor rips it away from Bryce. That's not characteristic of Mo's shooting ability, is it? Not at all. Plans nice great pass. feed to Bryce and in. Going off on a nice run now. I'll tell you, Bryce doesn't do much with his feet, but he sure has got great arm control. He made a nice move there to get around and get that shot. 51-50, Horton's in the middle. Good pressure defensively. Back to the zone, it's troubled Iowa to switch from man to man to zone. Horton leans in, got it, counts, and it's fourth foul on Grice. Well, you see him just put his hands down. Lack of mobility, his shortcoming at this stage in his career. That's 12 points for Horton, and let's take a look at it down low. Well, Bill talks about the footwork of the big man. Look at you, here's your favorite pass, right? You said they don't do it much, they look at a little bounce pass. And now just look at the hand drag. Couldn't seal the baseline off and just out of frustration reaches he, down. He was too upright right. almost. The he knees weren't right. flexed. Look at the great shot there. He tried to hook him with the one leg and he just can't get it done that the way. The mind knows what to do, but the body is not willing. The size 15s just won't do it. <laughs> so Horton goes to the line now.
and he's come off that bad ankle. He's played awfully well. Today. Terrible pass by Inbounds Douglas. Inbounds and the steal, and Jones has got his two. He's got eight, and it's 56-50. Doug put it in one hand and paid for it. Plansky strong inside, and the whistle. They're going to call this. Uh, he's got he's got it right this time. Good move by Plansky. I believe it's Eddie Horton down there. Get up, big fella. Tried to step in and offer it up. First foul on Horton. Kenny Wilson with a nice delay. Gets the second tier of the break into it, the trailer. And the finish by Mark Plansky. And Plansky now with seven. Last year, Plansky second in the Big East Conference in field goal percentage of 58%. He's a leading rebounder. Only six boards again. Plansky misses that free throw. Put the pressure on you by getting down the floor fast. Then they'll be patient. They'll pry, look for passing lanes, particularly down on the box. And right, he's departed. Wilson back in. That experiment did not last long. All the inside action. See Bill Jones run the baseline. Great good yes. pass from Armstrong to Horton. Offensive class it in, and that's why Iowa led the nation in rebounds last year. This guy was one of the factors. Well, when you miss, you're the first one to know. You know it's yep. short. He came down and went after it. The best that's ever done that, Moses Malone. Oh, still doing it. Talk about it. Straight out of high school, right, Moses? Yeah. Right here. Now, Horton knows it's down. Look at him right after the ball. Beckham Dam caught in the outside. Big Ed. Physical specimen. 52. Dave Cowens told me one time about Malone. What is, what's the best thing he does? Rebound his own missed shot and just put, keep putting it back up. He's amazing. What work happens in a game? Beckham Dam. Wilson now penetrates. Won't go. And everything with Wilson now coming up just a little short. And that's... The wear and tear, three straight days, a lot of minutes. Jones has played a good game. Bo three-point line hits! And the Jeff fifth! Bo. He's got 12 in the second half, 12 in the first seven and a half minutes of the second half. Rowley, Rowley knows they're on the ropes. He was up trying to calm them down, wants to save the timeouts. 61-52, the biggest lead for the Hawkeyes of Iowa at 9 and 12-20. Left to go in this basketball game. Critical time right here. Well, that's three-point land. Got it right back at you. Well, that's confidence in your club. A lot of guys would have called timeout, including me. <laughs> it'll mess them up entirely. Go out and do whatever. Nice bounce pass again and the foul. Plansky, huh? It's going to be four on Plansky. Now they're well schooled at getting the ball. You can get your eyes set when it bounces off the floor. It's so catchable, so easy to handle. And Jeff Moe's going to sit down. And man, did he do a job. Oh, hit a couple of three-pointers. So Grice and Plansky both with four. Michael Reeves in the backcourt now, along with B.J. Armstrong. Horton hits the first one. He's got 13. Excuse me, 16. Yeah! 63-55. Once again, they just can't create enough area to work. And we got a timeout. 11.59 left to go. Iowa, down by a point at the half, now has an eight-point lead. Roger, Roger, when Tom Davis was up at BC, he used to have Martin Clark and Jay Murphy there. They used to hand the ball. And see Lorenzen, how big his job is to blur the vision. Here you see the trap ready to take shape, but they deflect. See Reeves with the hand in. Very impressive, but really tough to cope with. The difference in this game, really, at the foul line. Iowa, 14 of 22, is going over one of two. That'll hurt you. Raleigh's going to ask a few questions about who was officiating this game. After. Well, actually, they haven't had the ball inside no, very haven't. much, and they haven't had those type of opportunities. 
Villanova will inbound. West, Massey, Taylor, Klansky with four fouls, and Wilson. Boy, that black wave just keeps coming at you. Wilson gets caught in the air, and luckily West is out there to find the basketball. He's only done that once tonight where he paid for it. Good control tonight by Kenny Wilson. Villanova will only go seven deep, and if he wants to bring it in right, that's an eighth player. So in right is not going to factor as Wilson comes up. Nice play. Major League. Oh. B.J. Armstrong just blowing by the gambling Kenny Wilson. Here's Reeves with the foul. With nine points now, B.J. Armstrong. We're told that that last foul was on West and not Plansky. So give Plansky mm -hmm. just three and West four. If We'll, we'll check that out as Grice comes in and Taylor comes out. Massey with a good job sealing off Michael Reeves there to get the basketball in. They can't even get it in right now, Roger. Slap Ken Hill. Now West, you're frozen. You can't run the baseline. West does have four. Plansky three. They got to go deep. Massey was there, but hands. What a great job by Hill. Oh, uh, they just. Boy, it was there, too. Yeah, it was. The home run pass was. Hill, back outside. Very patient now for Iowa. Horton, the scoop won't go. Michael Morgan really hustling in. Morgan, 24, 6'3", senior from Houghton, Louisiana, where he's, during his high school days, was just behind Robert Parrish, as far as career scoring in that particular district around Shreveport. Parrish. And the initial pressure is better this year than I saw it last year. I'm talking about NCAA. I just think I was... Revved it up a notch. Morgan's another one of those veterans. Six seniors for Dr. Tom Davis this year. The relentless, relentless uh, two empty trips now. Ten point lead, biggest lead for the Hawkeyes of Iowa, 65-55. The pressure just keeps coming in waves. and it's Has Tom slowed him up now a little bit offensively? Well, when he comes down, he'll be patient if they don't get anything quickly. They'll run it. Run their set, take take their time. It's an interesting contrast, Roger. Keep in mind they've done this without marble mm -hmm. in the second half. Maybe just seeing their main man with those stitches and the bandage over the head inspired them enough to I'd say half time turn it up a notch. That's right. To their advantage, I think, psychologically. Nine on the shot clock. How about that? Beautiful offensive movement, and Reeves finishes it off. His first two. 67 55 12 point Iowa lead. So now Iowa is going to force, if they can, the next minute or two, Villanova is going to have to play catch up. Now it's Iowa's game both ways, you know. Bryce kicks it back to Plansky. Three point land. Got it and a foul underneath. At least they got Ed Horton with a. This could be a four point play. Maybe five. Yeah. Two shot foul. Underneath. Second foul on Horton. Horton's explaining to Tom Davis. Tom feels he's been taken advantage of tonight. I and mean, he was I've never seen him that excited. I, I haven't either. I, I watched him for years in Boston and then followed him while he was at Stanford. Because he worked with Tom Young, who gets excited once in a while, so maybe it rubbed off. Well, I can see Horton doing a good job checking out. If anything, maybe Grice leaning in. Grice makes the first one. He's they, got seven, you wouldn't and now he's got eight. You wouldn't call that in the playground, would you? No, you wouldn't. They would, they'd boo you out of the park. Well, if one player called it on the other player, he wouldn't be calling any more <laughs> after that. So that's a five-point play. So we go from a 12-point lead down to a seven-point lead. 67-60, and Villanova will get it in bounds. That could be a seven- or eight-point play. Lorenzen is back in, along with... Jones, three-point three point land for Plansky. 
How about an eight-point play? <laughs> In and out. Doesn't take long for things to change. That three-point play has certainly gotten people in games quickly. Well, it's done for some teams what the uh, not having the shot clock did for some teams. Well, Rick Pitino last year, nice pass. They did that before underneath Taylor. That's never be saw him. Rodney Taylor never saw it. They did that before. Remember, you were questioning whether it was a pass or right. a shot. I think it was Bill Jones that made it. Do they want the other team to think it's an alley oop and maybe well, get that player up in the air, the defensive player? Are they so unselfish that it's simple to pass as you're jumping? You've got the shot, you see the man, and of course the defense is looking to get set to check out. 6'8", 235-pound senior from Cedar Rapids, Al Lorenzen. He's got eight. And looking on still with the oh. ice bag, Roy Marble. He said that Wilson was a little guy. I didn't know he had that much <laughs> punch. That really proved he could take a shot, huh? Once again, Iowa doing the job at the free throw line. They've shot much better in the second half. They've only missed one. Wilson quickly the other end. The left hand and the foul. And looking around in dismay is Ed Horton. He can't believe it. Penny Wilson does a great job leaning either way. This time, Ed Horton, he felt he didn't touch him. He was going to let him score. He's saying in the Big Ten, they let you play on. We put some bodies on people. 18 for Wilson. This is the home run pass you mentioned before. Lorenzen, the hands waving. Doug West gets some vision. Now watch the hip move to the right now. Holding the defender off, and see, now that's one of those you could certainly do without. Play on. And that's got to be number. They, they've said that's the fifth foul. Excuse me, now four on Horton. Wilson. I think we got a technical, too. Had to be on the bench. Wilson with eight and a half, 20 in the game, and Dr. Tom Davis. Oh, it had to be on Horton. We're told it was foul. I'm sorry. Gee whiz. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm confused now. Get the rule book out. 69-64, a 12-point lead has been cut to five. Jones with the steal, quickly down Great look. Reeves, Plansky the reach in, no call, and Reeves gets the hoop. Bill Jones played the passing lane, and of course he knows his teammates are going to take off. Good looking pass. Wilson now. 8.30 left to go in the game. 71-64, Iowa with the lead. Look at Grice. Did you see Grice in there? <laughs> Peggy West has got it. That's a two-pointer. We're going to show you a great look at Tom Grice in a moment. Seven points in the half, 16 for West in the game. And it's 71-66. The Lova hanging pretty tough. Of course, that bizarre sequence, right? Five points, almost eight points. Almost eight. With the defense banging down in here, went for Jeff Mo to end up with one. Wilson staying at home with him. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Down to five. Very patient. Jones, three-pointer. West got a piece of it. And here comes Villanova. Wilson with a two-on-one with Massey. Hill does a good job getting back. Great job by the big man, Kent Hill. Sure was. They hustle back. They go both ways, Roger. Fifth-year senior out of Wichita, Kansas, West High School. And Hill made the defensive play when it looked like Villanova had a break to cut it to four. Like Kenny Wilson looked a little tired on that. I'm not so sure it was a wise move. Lorenzen got the inside position oh. on Grice and slams it home. A Plansky had gambled baseline, but Al Lorenzen, great footwork. 11 points for Lorenzen. 73-66. But a bench really a factor, though. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Davis can go 11 deep, and he doesn't he doesn't lose much, if anything at all. Three straight days for the Villanova kids. Look at the passing lane again. And Reeves gets it in the foul on Plansky. 
And that's going to be four on Plansky. They just do a wonderful job of turning. You wanted an intentional foul there. <laughs> well, Tom's pleading this case. Might as well try. We've seen enough of them called. But they turn. They step in front of the next logical pass receiver so well. And you're stuck in the corner in a trap. You don't have many choices. One and one. Reeves hits the first one. He's 6'3", a senior from Milledgeville, Georgia. He didn't score in the first half. He's got six in the second half and a timeout. With 6.28 left to go. And Iowa's kicked it back up to a 9.75-66 lead. We'll be back to Maui right after this. How bad does seven foot two Tom Grice want the basketball? Watch the facial expression on the Villanova Center. <laughs> Roley told me on the back, beg for the ball. Let him know you're there. The Michael Jordan look like tongue wavering. Isn't that great? Oh, that's great though to see him going after the ball like that. I mean, he would not do that last year. Bill, 75, 66, 628 left to go. Raleigh's got a tired group of players. They're in foul trouble. What do you do now against this Iowa team? Well, the, the thing that Iowa does so well, they don't let you relax to get organized to do things. They keep going after you, so it makes you use energy, expend energy, and of course they would like to get you to shoot quickly. Villanova now getting to the point where they may have to play right into Iowa's hands. There's Plansky, West, Taylor, Grice, all with four, Horton with four for Iowa. Off Villanova. Iowa basketball. The pressure again. Hill playing the ball on the inbounds with West, and then Plansky just couldn't get a handle on it. And Mo Denyan in the wing. Now, Jack Ramsey's book years ago in the 60s started talking about this type of press, and I know Tom's read it and stolen some things from different people. The key is getting it in. After that, you got a chance. Villanova, man-to-man -man defense now. And a whistle underneath, and the foul is going to be on Horton. And that'll be all for Horton. What a difference, huh? Look at 18 of 26 for Iowa, 5 of 6 for Villanova. Horton will check out with 17 points. You know he did a job on the glass. He always does. He and Hill give them not the biggest center core, but uh, maybe the toughest. They take up a lot of space. They're both excellent athletes. In other words, they can get up and down the floor. And mm -hmm. let's face it, if you're 6'8 and you can cover that territory, I don't care if you're 7'2", you're going to be at a disadvantage because you're not going to get to those spots. And, and the point is getting to point A in the quickest possible time when you need to get there. And it's contagious, too. Exactly. You know? And then, of course, they're unselfish. If they make a steal, they're going to give it to their partner. Plansky with 11 now. I mean, you'd always love to have a 7-footer that can run like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But unfortunately, those are far and few between. Not too many of those out so there. So if you've got a 6'8 guy who can take up some space and, and move like Horton does, or a 6'6 guy like Hill, you might be better off in the long run in this in this particular game, at least the Tom Davis brand mm -hmm. of basketball. First Plansky giving up his body that last play on Eddie Horton. 75-68, 5.52 left. Hill inside and gets it to go. That's one Grice has got to get for Taylor. He missed it. West gets it to Taylor, and Plansky finds Wilson. Nine-point lead. I'm surprised Raleigh still has the coat on. Plansky, three-point land. Bryce tips, Mo gets the rebound. Two hands on the basketball. Unfortunately, they weren't the same guy. Yeah, if he didn't take it off in the first half, the code, right, Rolly? Wouldn't take it off at all. Things have calmed down. Fishers have regained control of the game. Kick it down. Man cuts through. 
working the 45 second clock now. It's down to 10. Now they'll get in their offense. Five. The offense is Armstrong. He's oh. got it. Only DJ gave him two. Armstrong. He's got 11. Kenny Wilson's not moving very much now. Can't get free. He hasn't touched the ball once on the inbounds pass that I remember no. this half. Bryce, same facial expression. Shot won't go. Lorenz in the rebound. 79-68. And with 4.05 left to go, the hoop here could just about wrap it up. Armstrong and in. Rolly with the timeout. Absolutely necessary. And now Villanova in a position they do not enjoy trying to come back. Iowa making a statement here tonight. Maybe they should be ranked atop everyone else in the country. We'll be right back. Roger Twyville, Bill Raftery back with you at the Lahaina Civic Center in Kahanapali, Maui, Hawaii, our championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Maui Classic. Iowa trailing by a point 38-37 at halftime, but with Roy Marble out with eight stitches over the eye and elbow just before the half. Inspired team, and they lead it 81-68, and Jeff Moe was the guy that ignited him off the bench, scored the first seven points in the second half. College basketball here tomorrow on ESPN, a doubleheader. Purdue against Illinois State, and then the final game, the championship game of the Great Alaska Shootout, Syracuse against Arizona. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. Lute Olsen's got himself a ball club well, down got, there at Arizona. He's, he's got Kerr back, which I know he's happy about. Of course, Sean Elliott, one of the great players in the country. And, and I, I think that incident really got this club going. I mean, it's like waking a sleeping giant. Well, it got Tom Davis's attention. Oh, it sure did. Because he had an outburst like we've never seen before. From Tom Davis. And a steal on the inbounds again. Jones, the baseline pop. Won't go. Hill the rebound and in. And Bryce, excuse me, Beckadam fouls him from behind. All right, now to Roof. Caving in, and it's all the press. I would love to have the stat, and I'm sure one of the coaches for Iowa keeps it. How many points? They, how many? How many? This. How many points have been turned in from deflections off this press? I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Bill Jones. He has been a heck of a player for a couple of days here. Hey, he's averaged coming into this game, talking about points, 16 points a game, and of course, and five and a half rebounds, and tonight. Jones, not much scoring, eight points. And last year, he averaged 3.7. So that tells you something, doesn't it? Hill with eight points. Wilson gets the long pass. That's the first time Wilson's got it over the top. He misses it short again. Beckadam puts it up. Plansky can't get it. And here comes Iowa. They lead 84-68 and traveling. But <laughs> first one we've seen in the yeah, second half. I thought they forgot that call. But right now, everything going Iowa's way. And as you... I've seen Villanova's got to come down and take quick shots to get back in it. Three thirty-five. I know Rowley's disappointed in this ball game, but I think he feels pretty good about his team overall. Oh, yeah. Good trip for them. Hey, they play. They played awfully well. Just the relentless nature of this Iowa team. They came from behind to beat Nebraska in the first game. Beat a good Illinois team. Mm -hmm. I, look. I mean, the Big East is one of the best conferences. The Big Ten is also one of the best. And Iowa, you know, I said maybe top of the top of the polls. Well, Michigan was above them, and they were knocked off. Arizona beat Syracuse. You know, with wins over Kansas and Villanova in this tournament, there'll be some changes. Well, Iowa's going to move up, up the board. Oh, well, I think they'll be there at the end of the year. This is a veteran team. It's solid, well-disciplined. Tom Davis wants a timeout, and they've got a great floor leader in B.J. Armstrong. He's done a wonderful job. Heady player. 84-68, to go. We'll be right back to now. Roger Twybell, Bill Raftery back with you here in Maui. And, yeah, hi, kids. Send money. Yeah, that's great when the folks, you know, go to Hawaii. And <laughs> we want to thank our tournament director, Ray Stosick, the county of Maui, and Chaminade University for their hospitality. It has been a great, great week. I know, Bill, you've been to a lot of college basketball tournaments, but this is this is kind of fun, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you, the 
atmosphere is a little different than the ones I've been to. And believe it or not, he's had a good time, too. He had a great time. His kids uh, have a lot to look forward to this year. 84-68, less than three remaining. Use some clock now, run it down. Looks like a delay game. This is something new, at least to me. I didn't see Tom run this before. Back court. Yeah. got a piece of it. Hill can't get it. He's away with it. And the foul underneath will be on Hill. You know, Hill went out for the Iowa football team. Broke, Broke his, his hand the first day of practice. I, there's enough of this. I'll go back to the hardwood. Chris, I think he's taking some of his moves to the hardwood. That's the prototype player these days, though, isn't it, Bill? The, the body size, ever since Barkley came in, everybody else is not laughing at those six foot six what they used to call Pillsbury dough bodies because they figure they can take a few pounds off and bulk them up. And well, The foot speed with these big kids, too, that's what's incredible. You can move around a little bit with that weight and strength. You're a tremendous asset. Villanova, 7 of 8 from the line. They just haven't been able to get there enough because Iowa's 19 to 27. West misses it. Love a little pressure to own the backboard here. I think they gave this to Massey. Massey. They got a tec technical on the on the Iowa bench. And Davis goes what? Well, this is this is one of those deals where officials should know the game is over. Let's just try and get out of here as discreetly as possible. Two twenty left to go, and they'll shoot him at both ends. Tom was obviously trying to explain something to one of his players, and I don't know, maybe the official thought he was trying to explain something to him. Now it's Plansky will shoot too. The players are having fun talking to one of the officials out of here. Some sarcasm, some wry looks. Two twenty left, eighty five sixty nine. And Jeff Mo says jump ball, it's our ball. And Tom knows the rules, yep. Alternate possession. <laughs> what does he say, Al, Al Lorenzo? Al say hello to his fiance. Oh. I guess we did. Not so much for mom, right? <laughs> You can tell these kids they got nothing but basketball, right? Well, now they're relaxed a little bit. The Iowa just came out from the beginning. It's organized chaos right now. This is what we have here. 220 left. Bill Jones just looked over at us. He, he can't believe it. 85-69. Bo wide open underneath. He waits and he gets smart. Kept Plansky on his back and Mo talking to Plansky. I mean, he is really into the game. I mean, he's, he's got 14 all in the second half. I bet he'd be great in baseball. Huh? Bench shock. Oh, yeah. Kenny Wilson very subdued. And Iowa throws it out of bounds. 87 69. 
with 1.45 to go, and Enright will check in. Mo will sit down. Mo comes out with 14 points. And for Jeff Mo, average 15.5. So he'll be right around the tournament, around that 15 point average. So I, it'd be interesting to see who they pick for MVP. Yeah. Mo could get it. I sort of lean to Bill Jones. Jones. Yeah, very, I, very quietly, Bill Jones has and, done so many good things. Yeah, that's right. The defense, he played the passing lanes. He ended up with about, what's he got, eight points? Yeah, tonight. Average 16 for the tournament, or the last two games. So tough decision. Half court trap now. Villanova trying to shake him up. Intentional foul. He's calling. Yep. My goodness. No comment. Okay, and Raleigh clears the bench now. <laughs> Mo's looking over at us. Never make your plane. <laughs> Most of the elbow started it. I, I can see where people in other arenas, other than oh, <laughs> he's Iowa old, City, <laughs> get over, huh? he's telling the referee what you know what to do. He's telling us what to say. You know, but you know what he—he's the kind of kid though that can get his team going. He's got a lot of pizzazz. But he's the kind of kid you'd love to have. And when he's on the yeah. other team, you can't stand him. You'd, you'd love to have him. You'd love to hate him, too. <laughs> and look at BJ. I'll tell you, Iowa doing it all. 91-69. Masadi in there. Beckadam. I'm surprised Beckadam didn't play some more tonight. With Bryce being in the early foul yeah, trouble. Yeah, he, he played. They're going to have a giveaway down the end. For Pat Enright. Uh, I, you know, it's a funny kind of a game. There were so many foul problems. They kept yo-yoing people in and out. I thought he did some good things tonight. Part of the growth and the physical nature of the inside people for Iowa, too. Make it tough for Barry Becker there. Les Jepson, 7-1 sophomore from Bow Bells, North Dakota. You've been there. Listen, I just want to know one thing, Bill. Whatever you do on your new deal, are you going to get this tournament written in? <laughs> I certainly hope so. Next year, I'll bring the family. This yeah. was delightful. My wife had a ball. Next year, we'll try and bring the kids in. And it was good to see you on the golf course. Hey, you, you enjoyed my money. If you're There's in the Iowa bench, and they'll have, it's going to be a long plane ride back to Iowa City. And yep. that man right there, eight stitches above the eye, Roy Marble was an inspiration and look at tom davis giving bj armstrong a big hug did play well look at him he he's got some energy doesn't he Tibiani in there with Basati. the walk-ons 93 71 less than a minute to go and right three-pointer foul after but pat Enright takes some nasty balls Les Jepson out there trying to block the shot. Well, it's been a delight working with you again, Bill. Good to see you yeah. after all these years. You've been on the golf the tennis circuit. Uh, only places where the sun shines. Ooh, any place they put a camera under a palm tree. That's huh? why I'm doing basketball in Maui. <laughs> Score the goal was a violation by Iowa. Raleigh. Ra Ra I'd love to have a mic on Raleigh right now. He's still jawing at him. Well, he's coaching for the end of the year now. Yeah. I mean, this is part of, you know, learning experience for his club. Nice play. And Morgan gets it, and he's fouled. As you look at Iowa, and you've seen a lot of teams during the past couple of years, and of all the college basketball you do, you know, we've talked about their depth, but I'm impressed that they can go down to an 11th man and not lose very much. And there are not many teams in college basketball that can do that. Well, you saw Michael Morgan come yeah. in. He only had four minutes all week here, and he hustled, did the things. Of course, they all are so confident in one another and interacting. But it's a little simple to play a little charge by Mo and uh oh Becca Dam hurt the knee. Oh, oh, goodness. 22 seconds left. 
And that would be a devastating blow for Villanova if that's a serious injury. Let's just hope he, he banged it and didn't turn it. Let's look at it. Actually, Pat Enright goes underneath him. Safe. Hits him. Oh, and it hyperextends. Oh. Enright from behind. You see it caught oh, the yeah. outside. Same player, different angle. You see Mo getting in too deep and leaving the feet right here. Unfortunately, you see it, it oh. buckled in. Oh. So Barry Beckadam with 22 seconds left. We're announcing the all-tournament team. Well, they selected the entire Iowa team as the MVP. And I guess when you, when, when you use Boy, is that 11 up, guys. Is that up Davis's alley? Yeah. Well, Danny I, Manning, Todd Lichty, Manning of Kansas, Lichty of Stanford, West of Villanova, Battle of Illinois, and Mo of Iowa, the alternative. And Beckadam being helped up right now. So with 22 seconds left, Barry Beckadam, the backup center, and a man really being counted on this year for Villanova. Mm is helped off the court by his teammates. They had the little guys, and he was straining with them. They sent the two big kids out to help him. Gee, I hope he's okay. He's really coming along, too. Well, obviously, the knee with the support on it, a little less than 100% already. Mm -hmm. hey, what about I'll tell you, Tom Davis... A tough week, too, you know, with the family situation. We mentioned earlier his wife's dad had passed away, and you know, not an easy time. But salvaging the tournament went out of it. And, uh, you know, his team just gives him night in and night out a lot of joy and satisfaction. Tribubiani at the foul line, 95-72 with 22 seconds left. Massey puts it back up and in. They just keep coming at you, don't they? Make good judgments, too, frequently. Morgan. Jewel, who's in, puts it up and in. And that'll be the last hoot. 97-74 is the final. The University of Iowa has won the 1987 Maui Classic. Bill, this is going to be a, a team to be reckoned with when it comes to the end of the year. Uh, they, they have all the answers, I think. The center position is a strong one. Maybe not the size, as you noted, but good leadership, a good rapport amongst one another, too. I mean, they really give one another an opportunity, pressing and running the break. And they've got the man off the bench, Jeff Moe. Sure do. For Bill Rafter, I'm Roger Tribal. Final score here, 97-74, Iowa wins it. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, the Maui Classic Championship, Iowa and Villanova. Brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you.